How's it going you guys? So over the past couple of months, I've been really digging deep into the, the research, the literature, and watching different lectures and seminars, and really paying a lot of attention to different people's experiences with the ketogenic and the carnivore diet, okay? Um, it's a very fascinating and interesting topic for anybody who's truly interested in trying to find the truth about nutrition, health, and disease. Um, and there is a lot more to the carnivore diet especially that a lot of people are not actually uh, searching into, like all of the crazy uh, res uh, benefits people are getting in the World Carnivore Tribe Facebook group. Uh, reversing gout, reversing um, chronic inflammatory conditions and autoimmune conditions and all sorts of problems, um, including um, diabetes and even heart or heart disease risk factors like lowering their blood, their blood pressure. So there are a lot of, a lot of uh, variables that are just like hard to explain. A lot of results from eating a meat only diet that are very hard to explain. And obviously a lot of people are missing certain um, like results people are getting and they're just trying to say it's a placebo or it's mimicking a fast or all sorts of things. Anyway, regardless of all this, I can tell you a very interesting commonality between all diets and uh, or sorry, not all diets, but all diets that actually um, have potential to reverse disease or people actually report feeling great on it and report reversing disease or improving their health conditions, okay? I've noticed that um, any diet that promotes um, anti-inflammation, okay? through whatever mechanism. Now, I understand inflammation is actually the healing process of free radical damage in the body, um, but I suppose to keep things simple, we could just think of inflammation, okay? So when people eat a ketogenic diet or even a paleo diet that's really low carb or a carnivore diet, they always report lower markers of inflammation from what I've seen. It's extremely common and I've seen way too many people reporting this and posting their, their lab results for it to be ignored, okay? Um, obviously, reversing diabetes is something that is very common amongst these people, uh, but also uh, lower markers of inflammation like C-reactive protein and um, and liver enzymes and other things. Also, I've seen a lot of people obviously lowering their triglycerides, the fat in their blood when they do this diet. Conversely, I've seen a lot of higher carbohydrate diets um, seeming to cause high triglycerides for a lot of people, which, you know, there's different explanations for this. Um, so also, you know, some of the longest living people in the world actually consume a large amount of monounsaturated fats from both animal products and plant foods, and also polyunsaturated omega-3 three um, from fish okay, and animal products. Now, people like the Japanese, the Okinawans, and by the way, um, if you're gonna try to tell me that Okinawans were vegan, and that's why they have the longest living population, blah, 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 you're wrong. Um, they were only vegan during a five to 15 year span or, or largely plant-based, and that was due to famine and food shortage, which, uh, you know, because it was around wartime, uh, post-war and, and intra-war, etc. 
And and I and I have plenty. I know plenty of people who served in the army during that time. I know karate instructors, and there's data all over the internet. Um, anyway, um, the rest of their diet was largely based on pork, on on eggs from chickens that they actually uh, raised themselves. Eggs were actually very common during the forties, fifties, and well, the forties and fifties. At least uh, from for the soldiers that were eating there, from what I've actually heard from people who did that. But, you know, this, these are things I heard from people, from soldiers that were actually stationed in Okinawa at the time. So maybe it's wrong, right? Because it's not clinical evidence or <laughs> whatever. Um, but monounsaturated fat is actually the predominant, the pre, the dominant source of fat found in eggs found in pork, and also obviously found in avocados and many nuts and seeds, um, and olive oil and olives, obviously. Uh, but monounsaturated fat is found in large quantities in pork, eggs, you know, avocados, blah, blah, blah. And we do have plenty of mechanistic data and clinical trials showing that monounsaturated fats decrease inflammation and are very pro-health uh, pro for the body. But most importantly, they're anti-inflammatory. The same thing goes for people uh, that lived in Crete, and Crete was one of the blue zones. And just the Mediterranean uh, countries in general have always consumed a large amount of monounsaturated fats uh, from olive oil and also from eggs and other uh, sources of animal, but mainly, mainly from olive oil, lots of olive oil. In fact, there's uh, a lot of data that, that claims, uh, especially the people of Crete actually consumed up to 50% of their daily calories from fat alone, yet they have highest amounts of longevity or like uh, expected lifespan, the centenarians, etc., and lower lower amounts of heart disease. So I find, I find this interesting, and it's very hard to ignore this. Um, and these people also eat large amounts of fish, which contains polyunsaturated omega-3s, um, which we know are anti-inflammatory, or at least which, you know, is demonstrated by mechanistic data. Now also, these people consume a lot of whole plant foods. That is true, yes, a lot of, and it is plant-based, regardless of how much fat or protein they eat. You know, just because you eat a lot of animal protein doesn't necessarily mean your diet can't be plant-based. Um, in fact, um, people who are health conscious and, uh, or scientific-minded people who follow a paleo diet uh, generally, a lot of these paleo dieters actually consume more plants than animal foods, as far as quantity is concerned. Um, people who don't watch, paleo, uh, who don't actually pay attention to the paleo circle, wouldn't know. Even ketogenic dieters, a lot of them consume more plants than animal protein, and they consume a lot of oils and fats and things too, nuts and seeds and avocados, coconut oil. My point is. They consume a large amount of plants, but also a large amount of monounsaturated fats, polyunsaturated omega-3 fats from animal and plant sources. Listen, everyone thinks, oh, you know, um, eggs contain a lot of saturated fat. Yes, but they also, they actually contain more monounsaturated. And we also do have a lot of uh, mechanistic data and clinical evidence that the ratio of fats matter more than the individual fat. So, you know, for example, consuming more omega-3 and less omega-6 makes a huge difference. And if you have low levels of monounsaturated fats, higher levels of saturated omega-6, the balance is off and inflammation tends to be higher. So, what exactly am I getting at? Well, I mean, obviously, First of all, there's more to all this than just meat consumption or, you know, plant consumption or carbohydrate consumption, okay? Second of all, 
What I'm really trying to get at in this video is inflammation seems to be the key factor here, okay? We know that um, there's a lot of plant nutrients, polyphenols and dietary fiber that seems to reduce levels of infl inflammation in the body. We also know that ketogenic diets have a tendency to reduce inflammation, mainly due to uh, uh, glycation or advanced glycation end products and glycation in general. Um, they tend to be very, very low when you're not consuming any kind of carbohydrates, okay? And there's other reasons as well, okay? including body fat loss and the fact that your whole metabolism shifts to uh, basically um, feeding off of dead cells, you know, body stored body fat, um, uh, dead proteins or stored proteins, your mitochondria actually become even more efficient. Anyway, vegan diets, um, some for some people in, in, in done in some fashion, um, not all obviously, but many, many plant-based diets we can say, uh, promote health and lower inflammation, mainly due to the plant nutrients and the fiber. Now, yes, a lot of people actually experience more inflammation, uh, especially of the intestines when they eat more plant foods. That is very true. Uh, I really think that you know, at this point in time, like I kind of went through this period of time where I was kind of biased against veganism. Um, but the thing is, I have a very big reason why I come down so hard on veganism. The reason is that it does not work for everyone. I, I realize that my main intention is to promote the fact that food can be used as very effective medicine. And I feel like this fear of animal protein only uh, limits the medicinal f potential of nutrition and lifestyle changes. I feel like there's a lot of people who, who will suffer more on a vegan diet and who do and who come out with it. And we have all sorts of excuses for them like, oh, they weren't doing the vegan diet right. They weren't supplementing. You know, their gut microbiome, blah, blah, blah. And they're missing the point. The point is they tend to have better health, health outcomes eating predominantly animal products. And mainly, and, and maybe, a, you know, a little bit of vegetables here and there too. And there are a lot of people who just give up on veganism and give excuses. Um, but again, the commonality between all these nutritional styles that seem to reverse disease is is it inflammatory or is it anti-inflammatory and diets that decrease inflammation uh, promote peop you know good feelings in people you know that's the the number one thing is people feel a whole lot better like immediately in the short term they could feel the lowered inflammation and we have Evidence that shows obviously inflammation increases bloating uh, Inflammation inflammation is bloating inflammation is intestinal pain and intestinal distension So inflammation of the intestines You know, these are things that we can feel and inflammation has been directly linked to depression inflammation of the brain is a possible cause of depression um, Alzheimer's and many other things and we can feel like we can notice a loss of memory. We can notice a loss of circulation. At least I can, because I'm very sensitive and I'm an athlete. Um, we can notice an increase in depression or a decrease in energy. And these all ha happen to be very, uh, very intimately linked with inflammation. These are all short-term things that we can see. And when people consume diets that lower inflammation, they feel great. They have more energy. They have better sleep, less depression, more happiness, uh, greater digestion, etc. Crazy thing is they feel this immediately. Then they go get their blood work done and lo and behold, lower markers of inflammation. Now, I don't know how much of a case that is with 
other diets, but lately I've definitely been seeing this time and time again with ketogenic dieters and carnivore dieters posting their blood results and also reporting the way that they feel. So when people go out of their way to try to prove that uh, even things like, you know, carbohydrates are a problem. Hello, Lupe. My girlfriend just got home. Uh, or trying to prove that meat and dietary cholesterol um, causes, you know, obviously it increases serum cholesterol. That's a fact. But why is serum cholesterol matter in disease? Is it just something that is happening alongside the disease? Or does it actually cause the disease, you know? When people go out of their way to, to prove these things, like meat causes disease, blah, 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 the problem is, I mean, it's great, it's a great discussion to have, but they're neglecting the large amount of people that actually have great results on these, these ways of eating, that lower all their markers of heart disease and other things, including uh, coronary artery calcium scans, you know, vegans ignore all these these lifetime meat eaters who are have been keto for like five or six years and have no calcification of their arteries and they're like 50 years old. <laughs> they should have a sign of, of heart disease. And really, this pathetic excuse, oh, coronary artery calcium test isn't that great. You weren't saying that shit two to three years ago, okay? Now you are because you realize, oh shit, Meat eaters have clean ar uh, coronary artery, free of calcium. It must be soft plaques, you know. There, there's got to be a, an explanation. It's pathetic. It's sad, and um, it takes people away from from uh, empowering themselves to better their health. So, since I'm a little bit distracted now that I can hear my girlfriend's Netflix playing in the background in the bathroom and I do not have the ability to continue the focus right now because I'm so tired. I'm just going to leave you all with this, okay? Inflammation and diets that decrease inflammation. That's what we should probably be looking at. And even, even you know, a lack of polyphenols and plant nutrients and antioxidants don't really seem to be as necessary as we once thought. Although they have been shown to be very anti-inflammatory, don't get me wrong, but as I point out in my video on homocysteine and the vegan lies, I believe I, I demonstrated pretty clearly how animal proteins can actually increase your body's natural synthesis of endogenous antioxidant systems, such as glutathione. So, Yes, okay, animal uh, products may not have antioxidants the same way that plant foods actually do, but they do have an antioxidant effect in the body through other mechanisms. And this lowers inflammation, guys. It counteracts free radical damage and oxidative stress, which is what inflammation is for. So, plant foods also, polyphenols and antioxidants in plant foods help to neutralize free radicals which lowers levels of inflammation in the body. But definitely not if you have in, uh, intestinal inflammation and digestive problems that are aggravated by grains, then you're gonna have intestinal inflammation. And your in, uh, inflammation markers might not even be elevated in that case, but you will have Crohn's disease. <laughs> well, even though inflammatory markers are actually involved in that, but anyway, Leave your questions and comments down below. Uh, meat's not the cause of most diseases, and neither is veganism, okay? For different people in different situations with different overall eating patterns, um, you can go different ways and cause different diseases or go different ways and cure them. Be careful with bias and narcissism, okay? Uh, it's counterproductive. So, love you guys. Appreciate it.